Are you getting engaged soon? It's me, Mario. What is up, my friends? And welcome back to a new episode of Uncensored. You know, that's what we do here. And guys, today, I don't know what's happening. We're, have, we're having a podcast just with the boys because all our lives are drastically changing. Hmm. There's a lot of changes happening in our lives, all right? Mm -hmm. I just want to catch up with you guys. So give it up for Jeff and Riley. That's right. That's right. That's right. Okay. No. Good for us. Okay. So let's start with you, Jeff. All right. You have um. You've changed. All right. Yeah. You've changed. Mm -hmm. okay. I think we can all agree. We can all agree. Jeff's changed. <laughs> you just told me that you are gonna move in with your female girlfriend. Can you explain to yeah. me and the viewers what led you to that decision and what? Where's the Jeff that I know? <laughs> What'd you do with the real Jeff? Well, it's temporary. Okay. She's moving in with me. Yeah. And you know, it's one of those things like when you moved in with your girlfriend, Riley and I had a conversation and we were like, what the fuck <laughs> is this motherfucker thinking? He's got everything to live for and now he's got nothing. I'm True. just kidding. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> but I don't know. You take life as it comes to you. And yeah. she basically asked me. She got a situation where she got had to get leave her apartment. Mm, okay. And um, I think I'm a better person when I'm with her. Yeah. I think life has a little more meaning, more purpose, and I'm more well-rounded. Yeah. She's already changed my apartment for the better. It's kind of nice and cozy in there. We could Is she like redecorated it? Or? She redecorated it? <laughs> She's making me buy couches and shit. You have a bed frame? <laughs> we'll, we'll get to the bed later. Okay? We'll get to the we'll get to the Jeff's 57 years old, but he's still stuck in the college phase. He still does not have a bed frame. But hey, we're working our way up. No, I love that. And Jeff, I'll say on a serious note, I yeah. think you've evolved a lot. Like Jeff, said, you. when I met you, mm. you have like become so much more balanced in a way, right? Do you feel that? I feel that. Right? Thank you. That. Yeah. He still likes to get nasty. Yeah, 57. Yeah, now no. he gets intellectually nasty. Yeah. No, do you feel, okay, when you, when you made the decision to move, because it's like a step, right? For me, it's like, Moving in with somebody for me was scary because it is a step to a more committed relationship, right? It is a step towards potentially marriage, building a family, all this stuff. Do you feel pressure since you're 57 years old? Yeah. Your eggs are aging. <laughs> Do you feel pressure to accelerate things a little bit with your girlfriend and become more serious or are you just taking it day by day? By day? Do you think about the future? I do think about the future. I don't feel pressure to accelerate really mm -hmm. quickly because, you know, I think I could probably have kids in my 60s if I wanted to. <laughs> He's a fertile man. He's a, <laughs> He's a fertile Just a subtle flex, guys. Man. I don't think we have any problems down there. There's really you know, no problems down there. <laughs> I'm just but problems, yeah. I will say there is that thought to, like, go out into the wild completely single again is a little terrifying at 57. Mm. Yeah. You know, because we're in L.A. You can party immediately. There's lots of prostitutes running around. There's lots of drugs. You know exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> okay. But I would say, you know, it is kind of funny with uh, the three of us now, because when we first met, we knew exactly like what we had to do at the time. and we, yeah. we knew our goal at the moment. And now it's like a little more questionable. We're trying to figure out what we want. In yeah. Life. Mm. And so it is different times and you're evolving. You're fucking leaving. Yeah. It's messed up of you. Sorry for cussing. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. It's a it's a new life for the three of us. Right Crazy, now. I would like because we, when we met, we were all in the like the. I mean, Riley, I don't know what you were doing, but, like <laughs> Jeff, but Jeff and I, we were like, you know, like fucking pandemic. You know, we met. We'd started OnlyFans. We were modeling. You know, so we're traveling, focusing on that. Now it's changed a lot. Like if if you told me back then, like when I met you a year prior to that, I just moved to the United States of America. It's the first time I got a place. Like a place, period. Okay, I was no, I was a nomad before, and then I bought a plant, which was terrifying. When I bought Bob, I was scared because I was like, "You buy a plant, and that means you're an adult now." Mm -hmm. All right, and then fucking met my girlfriend. You know, before that, I was just like, like out there living fucking life in the moment. I was living in Asia, you know, and then all of a sudden you have a girlfriend, and then next thing you know, she fucking just takes you and you know cuts off your wings, and you just like, you just like are planted into a little pot mm. and that's where i am right now and i'm <laughs> i have this place right now in los angeles this place is dope i like it no i like it i'm never here but i fuck with it yeah so it's changed a lot and then riley here okay riley was floating around you know in the wind like a little like a little swallow okay and now 
he is swallowing even more. <laughs> <laughs> Leaving He's us. Swallowing a lot. <laughs> yeah. Soon. I'm flying the nest. You're flying the nest? Yeah. For the first so time. So you moved to the Philippines, yeah? Moving to the Philippines officially, yeah. I got the Crazy. I got the ticket. Yeah. Um after the multiple days of yeah. math and yeah. flight tracking to yeah. figure out the exact. I forgot that I have to also buy a flight out of the Philippines within 30 days, technically. Oh, shit, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. You can, yeah, you can just, you can just screenshot a flight. Yeah, I mean, I'm not gonna. Yeah. <laughs> but like, no, for sure. But can, what's your flight details? That's the funniest thing ever. You're flying out of the Philippines from Los Angeles? Oh, I'm flying from Los Angeles to Honolulu, Hawaii, to Guam, to the Philippines. Guam. Guam. Yeah, he tried to, it's not a real place. He made it up. <laughs> Mario, was, he's like, I've never Guam heard of Guam does not exist. <laughs> How much did that save you? Uh, Quite a bit, quite okay. a bit. Well, because the problem was I could get a, a flight for around a thousand, which is pretty expensive right now. But yeah. I could get a one thousand one way, but they were all like forty-hour flights with multiple layovers that were overnight and all this crazy stuff in weird places that I had never heard of. Yeah, unlike Guam, <laughs> one of Yo, the biggest it, countries in the but world. But it's so funny because Guam is like some island. And it's, it's, the, the flight is so funny because it's like when you draw a line from LA to the <laughs> Philippines, it's literally. You're gonna hit Hawaii and you're gonna hit Guam in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. It's yeah. fucking hilarious. It's just in it's the middle the most of nowhere. It's efficient flight ever. So it's, it's yeah, super efficient. Yeah, it was thousand dollars and it was less than twenty hours total, which is like, it took a long time to get both of those uh, checked off. And I get two free checked bags. Hey, United, yeah. this is <laughs> it's a United it's flight. United flight. Yeah. Oh yeah, I'm a United member now. Well, United sponsoring this podcast. Fuck. So. Has any had anybody? Oh my god, guys, I'm still pissed at myself. If you had told me. Four years ago, when I came to America, that I should get an airline credit card and collect miles, I would be a Titanium member. I'd be a fucking Vibranium member at this point. I think dude. I tried to tell you like a year ago. I would be a you fucking... didn't listen. I would be a triple <laughs> Vibranium <laughs> member, dude. You would. No, for real. I, you know how You're much right? I spent on hotels? If, if I had just committed to a fucking Marriott or Hyatt or something, mm. I would have cleaned up, dude. It would be so great. Now I'm in New York. I'm spending, I'm, 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 I'm basically living in New York right now as well at hotels. I could have lived, I could probably have lived for like a month in New York just off points. Yeah. But I didn't. So here I am just paying for hotel rooms like a peasant. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. Riley, what made you leave the greatest country in the world to go to the Philippines? Um, I just loved it there. I mean, we all, <laughs> we, we did our little adventure. Yeah. Um, after, Food poisoning. Uh, yeah, I, a and, lot of, and when I got my hearing back, oh my god, um, it, was, yeah. it was great. <laughs> and uh, it's just cool. And and I really loved the agency there that we that we were meeting with the the modeling agency, New New Monarch. Shout out. Yeah. Um, it was cool. It was just great people, great vibes. I felt very inspired for creating content. I've been struggling a lot with just creativity and having the energy to create the things that I am inspired to create. Yeah. It's like, I'll either have a bunch of inspiration with no energy or I'll have a bunch of energy, but then I haven't been like inspired. Yeah. Inspired yeah. or like taking the steps to make sure I'm inspired. And yeah. And I think a lot of it is environment. Oh, it is hundred percent dude. Environment is so big. Yeah. And I think just being around, I don't know, it's like the modeling vibe was cool. And it reminded me of what it did is it reminded me of when I started social media and all of everything was, mm -hmm. was with modeling. Yeah. Yeah. Because I was like, I want to get into modeling. And so I'm going to make a social media and I'm going to kind of learn the social yeah. media algorithms, all this stuff. And so this whole journey that I've kind of been on started from just modeling. And, yeah. and that's why we kind of talked about it. And I'm not seeking to become like a, a international supermodel or anything like that. I'm not expecting to make a bunch of money for modeling. Yeah. Cause I know that's probably not going to be the case. Um, I'm just purely doing it for the fun. That's great. That's that I enjoyed. Idea. And and I also know that that gives me the ability to, uh, you know, if I were to end up in any sticky situations, no pun intended with modeling, yeah. um, I'll have the ability and, and the option to walk away from those things mm -hmm. because I yeah. don't need modeling. I'm just yeah. only doing it for the fun. and Yeah. And, Thrill, and there's so. less, I feel like just being in the Philippines where you also spend a little less money, <sighs> there's going to be a lot of, because I'm kind of envious of that part because I am technically moving to New York City mm. where like I'm going to be bi-coastal for stand-up comedy. 
and I picked the most expensive place in the world, whereas you pick the place that's like, it actually takes some pressure off. It can be a, sorry, I'm just in my head. This is going to be a podcast clip right here. Mario's by Coastal. <laughs> <laughs> you finally, uh, I'm gonna it's come not out the buy that by people are expecting you to come coastal. out as. But. <laughs> I haven't yeah. heard by Coastal that much, I'm going to be honest with you. Oh my God. Joe Young has a joke where she goes, uh, I'm by Bipolar. <laughs> <laughs> No, I think I think it's been done by a lot of people now. So I feel, yo, I'm proud of you though. You're evolving from a Charizard to a Mega Charizard. A Mega Charizard. Did you know that's a thing? I didn't know that was a thing. A There's thing a now. fourth evolution. There is Mega Charizard, Mega Charizard X, and Mega Charizard I can't Y. Believe we're talking about this on the podcast, dude. This is some real nerd shit, and I I mean, we can move I'm past here. it. I'll just show you. I'll just know show you a photo. What later. language y'all are speaking? You don't know what a I mega listen to like some, I listen to a bunch X of. Is. You know, I try to make. I'm trying to make a lot of reels about like Andrew Tate and stuff. So I'm like, um, I listen to a compilation of Andrew Tate. So now, like, he would definitely have something to say about that. You know, him talking about mega charge art. This is you, bro. I'll respect his. What the fuck? He becomes <laughs> blue. Wow, that's kind of hot. That's cool, right? That's that's Mario. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> okay. I love it. No, okay. No, we're all evolving. So in the Philippines, you just want to like, you just want to model a little bit, you know, and then then live where, like, travel, stay in one, like, stay in Manila, or do you want to like travel, hop some islands? I mean, you know, yeah, hop some. In my head, the vision was to hop some islands. I forgot it's the rainy season there. Yeah, and I've been looking up the weather, and it's all uh, <laughs> that feels like temperature because it's so humid there. It, it <laughs> feels like 110 every yeah, yeah. day, and it's raining That's every day, crazy. and there's thunderstorms. Yeah. So yeah. I'm like, it's hot as fuck. I'm going to be honest with you. Yeah. I was there be right before that a little bit and it was really hot, but it's still fine. You know yeah. what I mean? It's just I like, think it'll still be cool. <laughs> I, yeah. I can still go, really I can, go, I can learn how to surf. That'd be cool. Some 90 yeah. degree yeah, rainy yeah. surf days. Yeah. Could be a little surf boy. No, I love that. And I think that the thing is like, you should do anything like the, expe- I love the expectation with, with it. You know, you just want to have fun, make experiences. How fucking great is it that you can go to a different country, learn about the culture, have a different perspective, get inspired, and kind of work there as well. What a, what yeah. a fucking blessing we have right now to have the freedom to do that. Mm. Mm-hmm. I thought about this a lot when I went back to Germany, and I, I thought about like my great grandfather just a couple generations ago. Crazy, they could not even leave in Germany if they wanted to go to like Switzerland, which was like it's not far now. It's like a forty minute drive. It was a it was a journey. It was like a big thing to even leave. And then thinking even further back, you would the world would end behind. The mountain there right isn't that crazy it is crazy and now you can be like yo i'm gonna hop to the philippines i'm gonna go to bali for a second you know and then i'm, I'm just gonna I'm find myself <laughs> isn't that fucking myself. crazy <laughs> like i'm gonna do shows now i'm gonna go to like um texas then i'm uh, by the way uh, go to mario comedy <laughs> sign up for my email newsletter because i'm coming to plug. your state okay i'm coming to your state to do stand-up so comedy felt that he hits the plug <laughs> 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 i fucking love what you're doing don't forget <laughs> mariochacomedy.com Back to what we were saying about you. You were you're, you're doing really well. This is still my podcast, oh. right? So I'm gonna plug no. whatever the fuck I want. But I'm seriously, guys, yeah. check it out. Because I'm sending updates to you when I come to your city. It's exclusive, okay? So you join the family right you can now. Put what state you're from, and then you can get notifications That's when exactly you come to your right. state. That's yeah. cool. Yeah. Right, cool. you built the whole thing. So yeah. Oh, did I? Yeah, you did. Oh, yeah. You might have to come to Memphis now yeah. that we've yeah. at least found one fan. Yeah, no, 100%. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> might have a flock. Okay. No, I'm going to, we're going to Texas, fucking North Carolina is a bunch of states I've never been to. So I'm excited. Yeah, you're I'm finally excited. you're finally getting your wish on seeing the U.S. Dude, I'm so the excited. The middle parts. I love it. I love, I want to see the middle parts. I want to see my fucking, once I do, I'm going to film my stand-up special in Arkansas, bro. Let's go. Fucking Arkansas. I'm going to go there. Arkansas is the, for me the coolest place ever. I think Arkansas sounds so cool. Like in Germany, when we hear Arkansas, we're like, fucking America. You know, it sounds real. It sounds cool. I feel like everybody looks like Clint Eastwood there. I barely even know about Arkansas. Yeah. I know I know one emo girl who lives there and that's all I know about Arkansas. Yeah, so. I know nothing, but I tell people I'm from Arkansas. When people ask me where my accent's from, to fuck with them, I go, Little Rock. I'm from Little Rock, Arkansas. <laughs> America. All right, all right, all right. It worked on Scarlet. Yeah. It did, right? Some people believe that shit. Yeah, yeah. You've got too many teeth to be from Arkansas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they have a lot of teeth. <laughs> Whoa. Dude. What I'm you from mean? from there. Close by. Tennesseans yeah. hate Arkansans. Is that so? I don't know. Is there a rivalry? Arkansas hillbillies. You think For I'm real? playing. Income per capita is like $12 you right a year. Look up, look at the graph right now. $12, $12 dollars a year. <laughs> <laughs> that's, yeah, that's a good income. Bank. Oh my God, yeah. No, because you, your money's going to travel further, you know? So like with... That's also, yeah, very... How much, okay, how much do you think compared to... I have to say numbers, but like percentage-wise. LA, right? You spend $1,000. 
How much do you need per month? To, just say a number. How much do you need per month to live in LA? What do you say? Like living a very chill lifestyle, like just to, to live fully, rent food, li- everything. rent everything, but living at a place you share, you have a roommate, you know, that with your partner, like okay, 3,000, like 3,000 <laughs> at least. I feel yeah, like yeah, yeah. to and be that's, a nice that's, that's place super sharing good. with somebody. That is, <laughs> that is great. If you can, like that is an achievement, like spending that's low, like yeah. that's low. You, that's, that I don't means, have a car. That means you're, yeah, <laughs> like, that means you're really like, have a car. Yeah, that that means you're re- none of us are cars, but you know, <laughs> but I'm spending a lot more. No, but that that means you're really, you know, you don't go crazy with money. You know, you're really saving money. You, you know, not going crazy to restaurant because once you go to restaurant, bro, fuck. If you go to Erwan, you t- just eat lunch at Erwan. Yeah, fifty bucks every time. Crazy for lunch thing for a salad. It's crazy. Yeah, you know. And yeah, then so how the much? You, how much are you expecting to? What's your overhead in the Philippines? What do you think? Maybe a thousand. That's crazy. Maybe that's yeah. like. Yeah. Only yeah, because Korean barbecue is fucking like ten dollars all you can eat. I was gonna say it's only it's only because I'm gonna be probably shopping at like the expensive supermarket for my food and stuff. Um just for it's I don't wanna I don't wanna eat rice. I've been feeling better not having rice, but it's impossible to not eat rice there. Well that's racist. It's not racist, it's you rice. Eat rice. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, I just feel better when I don't have like what's wrong with rice? Is it too Asian for you? A lot of the rice is like harvested with Monsanto products mm. and stuff like that. And I, I don't know where the Philippines get theirs from. If they get it yeah. from China, then China definitely has like heavy chemicals and stuff like that. Yeah. And yeah. I feel better when I don't have that. Yeah. I've noticed. So yeah. Just um, shoot, shoot your own deer like Joe Rogan, bro. Do they have deer in the Philippines? <laughs> <laughs> Filipino deer. I don't think so. I don't think so. I don't think so. I can't. Maybe so. an Asian deer. Maybe, I mean, Japan has deer. So why can't the Philippines? It just seems a little too warm of a climate, you know? I don't know, yes. deer associated with the forest and kind yes, of like, you know, like true. Germany. Japan is more of that climate, you know? They have definitely like more of that. That's true. You got to bring your own gun. I can't bring anything. You can't bring anything there? can't bring anything there. No, I can't bring like Adderall or anything like that for sure. Okay. Why? Uh, the Philippines doesn't do any sort of like amphetamine based, uh, like they don't prescribe Adderall there or anything like that either. So They have like America has very like... The most chill country with like any any drugs, I feel like for sure. Like even there's some workout boosters. I remember my friend, he got a sponsorship with a a, a, a brand called Jack 3D, Jack or whatever it's called. Oh, it's shit. a pre workout booster. It's pretty big. You probably like heard of it. The strongest one ever. It's the strongest <laughs> one ever, dude. I took that shit because a brand when I was doing Instagram in the beginning, I was doing like I was modeling. Right, they always I had a lot of brands send me stuff. I was a wholesome, wholesome, wholesome influencer at one mm-hmm. point in my life. Right, I did sponsorships with New York Sports Club, bunch of fitness brands. They would send me shit all the time. And they gave me this thing and I remember this. I was in New York and I'd done a photo shoot at 4 a.m. I woke up to do a sunrise photo shoot my last day in New York. I drove, I took my bicycle from Williamsburg all the way to Central Park to shoot with this photographer, Sean Water, shout out, photo right here, amazing photo. I looked ripped as fuck because I was just like on no sleep, crazy. (laughs) Got back and I had like a barbecue where like, you know, the model, we were at a model apartment. There was like, I had guys staying there. I'd, I'd, I'd spent my first three months ever in New York. It was a great community. I love those people. So I had like a little barbecue as a goodbye for, you know, me leaving and going back to Germany after my contract. And I took half a serving of Jack 3D. <laughs> half a, I was like, what are we kidding me? It's just, it's, I'm German, you know? Put half a serving there. I swear to God, I could not sit still at the barbecue. I was like this. I was like, I was like, <laughs> I was just like. <laughs> I mean, you know, that's you with like a quarter of a Celsius now. <laughs> like, it's I crazy. can't even no, imagine you no, on real. pre-workout. It was, I'm, I'm very, I don't drink coffee or anything. I drink green tea. So I have some, but I'm very sensitive to caffeine. Bro, I swear to God what I did. No joke. I went for a run. Mind you, I had woke up at 4 a.m. that day. I went for a run over the Williamsburg Bridge, full sprint. And I came back and ran all the way back to Brooklyn again. And but this is not like a chill. This is pretty far, okay? Like from Blaze over the bridge yeah. to Manhattan and back. <laughs> and full run the whole time. I was putting some like fucking- Put that in LA like, terms. How I far put is some that? Dutch, I put some Dutch. Huh? How far is that in LA terms? Dude, I don't know. It's <laughs> fuck. It's probably like, I don't do miles or anything. It's probably like a 7K run or something. Okay. But I was, I was sprinting. I was efficient sprinting. with it. Okay, yeah. yeah. And I listened to some like Dutch hearts. I was just like- <laughs> Check the penis. It's actually a song, yeah. Check the penis up and down. Kiss the penis. This is what you listen to, huh? Yeah. So 
Check I, it for ticks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just that, that European hard style. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's like beautiful. Yeah. It's beautiful. And then and then I came back and um I did the whole barbecue thing, you know, we had we had the thing, and then I went back to my um to the plane and my plane was like a midnight plane or something. I sort of got bored of the plane and then the thought the thing wore off. <laughs> and you just I crashed <laughs> and I wo- I had to be woken up in Germany by the like really? I, I've never had that before. I slept from I remember the plane taking off and then just when I closed my eyes, I woke up in Germany. Wow. It was wild. I slept throughout the whole plane. It was the best, best thing ever. Let's go. So it's Well, that stuff know. was on another level at the <laughs> time. And in Germany, so why I said my friend got um they sent him a thing as well, like a, a serving package or something, like um a, a trial package. Uh sample. Sample. <laughs> and they confiscated it because it's it's it falls under the um, you know, amphetamine category mm. in Germany. So it was declared as like drug smuggling, you know? Wow. And I don't know if he got a charge or something, they just took it from him, but it's pretty, it's pretty serious. <laughs> so yeah, crazy. In the US, I don't get there. Just like, yeah, whatever, to put whatever in the, in the food. Yeah, yeah. Doesn't matter. Yeah. But I'm going to miss. Oh, this was oh, my little schnookel schnecker. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> full circle to that. Schnookel schnecker. My little schnookel schnecker. I love that. Riley's been sending me these super cute <laughs> text messages with like German, how do you call them? Like, like, like pet names. Pet names, yeah. yeah. Nicknames. Eagle Schnäuzchen. <laughs> That's my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> it means like little hedgehog snout. I call them my little hedgehog You don't hedgehog send me snout. these. Hey. You can be my uh, honeybeechen. Why are you looking at my penis? Honeybeechen. <laughs> <laughs> That's cute too, yeah. <laughs> little honeybee. You can don't be my little penis. Toilet. Call me little honeybee. <laughs> <laughs> are you going to go back to... Um, the red light district in the Philippines. <laughs> I'm gonna ch- attempt to avoid that for as long as possible. But what? <laughs> you had such a great experience with the lady boy. Maybe, maybe if you if you if you find yourself in the embrace of a lady boy with the proper preparation and training, mm-hmm. you will rise up to the occasion. That's you know, true. that's true. I just don't think i'll need it if i really apply myself there <laughs> okay okay how do you think you're gonna get anything there without plowing through a lady boy i'm gonna go like this these are the gatekeepers <laughs> in the modeling industry just like that oh shit i see that's it yeah the smolder yeah. that's gonna work that's gonna work yeah hey make sure I give he, you he became a tiktok t- he just became like a tiktok sound he was just the like, pov He's got the long hair now. Yeah. I'm cutting it's it tomorrow. Kinda interesting. He's cutting it tomorrow. Like, <laughs> hey, it's kind of interesting. I, like I actually kind of fuck with it. I really can't decide. Some days I like it. Some days I don't. But yeah. but what settled it for me for sure was the 90 degree rainy weather. Yeah. That I'm like, it's got to be. I got to cut this short. Yeah. There's yeah. no way that I'm going to. Yeah. This is just going to go flat. Yeah. And it's gonna no, it's not gonna be what do you. Okay. So what, what are you going to do with your relationship? Because you're going to be gone. I'm not talking about Jeff right now. I'm talking about your partner, the other one, right? You're so, <laughs> um, by the way, you guys are seem like in. I feel like I'm. I feel like I'm Oprah, and I'm interviewing a couple right now. <laughs> yeah. You guys are just like freaking on one side of the couch. Like, you got little. Yeah, no, no, no. Dex yeah, came over to me. You, you know, he's like there. right next to my. Let me <laughs> stuff know, whatever that, that is. That, that talk to you. Know, nobody <laughs> needs to see that. <laughs> yeah. No, what are we gonna do? What are you gonna do about your relationship? You're gonna be gone for how long? A year, maybe. You don't fucking know. I have no idea. Four to. 18 months. Like 14, 18 months. Nice, nice, nice. Anyway, yeah. 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 Um, it's just going to be the way it's been. Okay. He's yeah. so casual. so nonchalant about it. He's like, yeah, our relationship, our, are. yeah, our relationship is as strong as it's been. I, I don't see distance being an issue with that. Um, especially with it being a poly relationship and everything like that. Yeah. And, and she has another partner here that she's been seeing. And mm. the one thing that will change is that when I come back, we'll probably continue to have separate places. Mm-hmm. She wants. She's happier over in Mar Vista. Yeah, yeah. She's not where I want to be. It's very far away from everything. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I want to be here. And and just space wise, I think it just makes more sense to have our own spaces, especially if yeah. we're continuing to see other people. Uh huh. Um, uh-huh. It's just easier. Does it way, feel so. like this when you leave though? That this is a real goodbye at that moment because you don't know what's gonna happen, right? Um. Yeah, that's true. I what know. if you What if you go to the Philippines? You know, you fucking you fall in love with a lady boy, and you just settle down and you live in Asia and you become Asian. 
That would be my dream come true. <laughs> I, I always thought it. it would be in Japan, but yeah, you know, no, I can see it. Quote him yeah. on become an Asian. <laughs> <laughs> he, no, he, I told you before, like they, it's gonna happen, dude. Right, like, you become the five people you spend more time with. <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> okay, so so, so if you right, yeah, like it, it's gonna happen for you, and it happened to me when I was modeling in Asia. I'm saying this for a reason. I said this in last podcast, like. They edited me Asian. I don't know what the fuck they did, but they had a filter that made me look half Asian. And Riley already looks more Asian than me. So he's so going to be 75% Asian. Yeah. They're going to ask him if he's like, are you half white? They're going to ask him that, you know, instead of like, are you, are you mm. like mixed? You know, they're going to ask like, are you, are you, are you, are you are white? You, are you? <laughs> <laughs> you're some white. You have yeah. some Caucasian you in you? You have some white in you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You want some white in you? Yeah. Just give him like a half year. Yeah. yeah. I'm just going to be a big use. Yeah. <laughs> I got a little, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. There's a brand there, like Oxygen. I don't know. OXGN. It was a clothing brand. And uh, I had bought I know a few. the molecule, but not the brand. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I'm a model, not a, not a molecular biologist. Okay. But I looked it up yesterday just because uh, I wanted to kind of look at the clothes and, and figure out what I'm packing, what I'm not packing. And, and it was just so funny because I, I... Well, I know where you're not packing. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hey, I'm sorry. Okay. Jeff I'm sorry. loves me anyway. Can't yeah. have it all. <laughs> Can't have it all. But I was looking at the catalog or whatever, and, and I was like, hey, I know her. I was just like, she was one of the girls that we hung out with. And then I was like scrolling. I go, wait. It's just like every single photo, every product photo was a new Monarch model. Okay, I yeah. Like, every single person that I was hanging out with, I'm like, hey, I know all these people. Yeah. I just thought it was cool. I haven't had that uh, experience yet. I'm sure you guys have already had that experience. Just seeing your like model friends all over the place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, yeah. it happens a lot. And I feel sometimes like, good for you, bro. Like a lot of the models, I what I told you about the model apartment I was staying at, I saw them on like freaking... Like a lot of my, this guy did Prada campaign, you know, I see him on like big fucking campaigns. I'm like, fuck, that's great. Good for you. Good Jeff, for you. You, no you look happy and healthy. Not, but you really dove into the social life there because I was seeing you at the mm. clubs. You're posting all these fucking. Yeah. You know, thirst stores. traps like a <laughs> slut just we in were the like, clubs wait. all the time. I lost all respect for you, bro. It honestly looked dope though. It's, a, it's yeah. I mean, that's. The reason that I, I think was just enjoying it so much and being feeling so creative was it just clicked. I don't know. It clicked in a way that LA hasn't quite clicked yet. I'm going to tell you one thing about the environment. It is so important. I feel the same about New York City. When mm. I'm in New York, and we, we talked about this, right? When I'm in New York, I am the most efficient version of myself. Bro, imagine that. No, it is. You think I'm <laughs> efficient imagine. here? No, no, no. It is, it is, it is a joke. What I do in LA is pathetic. It is literally pathetic. Bro, I film like what? Like 60 TikToks a month? What? I post like four podcasts a week? Fuck that. In New York, bro, I, here's the thing. In New York, there's an energy around New York and I don't want to fuck, because people have said this and people I talk about, Casey Nice that always talks about this shit, but it's so fucking true. Mm. There's an energy in New York that is unparalleled. Like you wake up in New York and you see people hustling. Like you just walk up and there's people just walking and you're like, Oh, you're in that environment, that collective energy where you're just like, um, I'm roll this. this is great that in the fucking moment where I have like, I'm getting passionate about this shit. It's like, let me tell you about New York. <laughs> There's an energy about New York. Like, let me tell you about New York. <laughs> let me tell you about New York. So <laughs> when I'm in New York, I become Mario. <laughs> I'm not Mario, Mario. I'm Mario. Ah. <laughs> no, it's fucking crazy because you walk, okay, here in LA, right? It's like what? It's like 5 p.m. right now, okay? I walk, like I look outside LA, I see a guy smoking a blunt in a, in a, in a G-Wagon, all right? I'm like, maybe I should do that, okay? There's people walking hey, their dogs. Cool. Who the fuck walks their dog? In New York, you walk, people hustle 24-7. I'm with Zhao Ying, okay? And she's maybe even harder working than me, okay? She's Chinese. She's got fucking trauma from her ex-husband. She wants to prove the world wrong, right? She has two kids to feed. She's like, Mario, we come back from a show, okay? At like... Mm, 1 1 a.m. Okay. We came back from a show and we're in New York. And I was like, in LA, everybody would have been, okay, let's just whatever, watch an episode of The Bachelor and <laughs> go to bed or something, smoke a blunt, chill out. Zhao Ying is like, Mario, let's make some black tea. I need some caffeine. We need to work more. So we sit down at 1 a.m. and work more until like 2 30, 3 a.m. in the morning. Wake up, work more. You know what? Now that you mention it, you have been messaging me a lot later than usual, I've noticed. You've well, it's also I'm three hours ahead of you in New York. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. Maybe that's yeah, also yeah, why. Yeah. But no, that means that. Because I mean, you messaged me even like last night at like 1130. 
Yeah, no, I'm you're just I'm, on, I'm, I'm you're on that East Coast do, time now. I do stand up comedy. So when I do stand up, you always you automatically do stuff later. And in New York, mm. stand up is fucking crazy in New York. And it's it's just so productive there. Like one week in New York, I feel like it feels like dog years. Like a week <laughs> in New York is like seven weeks in LA. Fuck LA. I mean, LA is already kind of known for being slow. It is even. slow. And I didn't and I always thought, yeah, whatever. It's about you. It's about, you know, if you're efficient, and it's kind of true, but if you're efficient already and you plug yourself into fucking New York, you become the fucking mega Charizard. <laughs> for real, for real. And I want that, man. It's so cool. And that's, I love having the base, like the, the base in LA, but then going to New York more. Because if I go to New York and I commit to this shit, bro, like I'm, I do so much there and yeah. it's fucking great. And I love it. Oh, also, I have, no, I have no girlfriend there and I'm at a hotel. <laughs> I'm spending so much on, on the hotel. You met a new girlfriend there. Is that what you said? No, he said he has. His name is Bobby. I'm sorry. No, I have no girlfriend there. I love my girlfriend, but like, you know, there's no dog. I love you, Dex. But listen, you're a little distracting sometimes. You know what I mean? I'm sorry. Look at him. He's sad now. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't mean it. But the thing is, um, in New York, it's just like you're at a hotel and you're like, okay, I'm spending money on this fucking hotel. And am I going to go back at like 9, 9 p.m. and go back to my hotel room and jerk off? Yeah. Oh, no. No, no, right? No, no. no. You guys are like, oh, no. yeah, yeah, that's what you fucking do. No, I'm not going to fucking. I'm New York City. I'm spending so much, so I'm make. I'm gonna make every single second of my time here worth it. So I'll go out and I meet somebody and I go to a stand up club and I meet people and I get inspired and I get home and I write and I don't do any other shit. I I want to dive a little deeper with Mario because I hear this guy over here. He's changing a lot for the better. I think he's going to fucking hundred miles an hour. It's hard to keep up with. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What? Where is this taking you with like your purpose in life? Your meaning? No, I'm serious. Cause like I hear career, I hear hobby. I hear someone that's got his passion. He's 100 miles an hour. Don't, don't fucking get in my way. Don't stand in my way. I'm here with this. But I'm like, give me something a little deeper. Where is it taking you? Is it like, what is this? What is your purpose? Is your purpose to... What is your purpose? No, I want to know where is this is going with the meaning of your life, and and I'm where does saying, that leave Jeff? Imagine we're on exactly. Where is Jeff and most you? importantly, <laughs> where does it leave me and Riley? God damn it! Oh All right, my God. because we're here, okay. <laughs> and I'm, we're not in New York. I still live in L.A. I'm still based in L.A. You know what I mean? Okay. But. Better be. Jeff, I never heard that said of you. Like, what, are you a vegan now? What the fuck? No, I'm just hearing this man over there, and I'm like... Ah, Sitting on the other I side like of the couch. But no, we're talking about the other that. side of the country. <laughs> <laughs> no, listen. Um, you asked about purpose, right? Yeah. So it truly is to prove to every single person who has ever doubted me Bobby. and thought that male models... Mm. Can't be more than just ridiculously good looking, okay? Mm. All the people who thought that models cannot have a personality, all the people who thought that models are just there to be a clothes hanger Mm. that you can sexually harass. I want to prove to these people that we can do something with our lives, okay? We can be more than just being ridiculously good looking, okay? And that's what I'm proof to the Lord. I want to, yeah, I just want to stand up comedy, bro, because there's so much purpose in making people laugh. Whoa. Being ridiculously good looking is a good purpose. It helps people. It helps True. people feel bad about themselves. No. It Perpetuating them, it, an unattainable beauty it, image. It gives them something to better themselves for. <laughs> <laughs> to thrive for. It so reminds cool. them of where they're not. <laughs> so it makes them more ambitious. <laughs> it's like a good. it's like a you know, a mood board. <laughs> It's a mood board. Yeah, I want to be. So yeah, some people want to be mood boards. I have nothing else. That's cool. <laughs> but I just want to make people laugh, dude. That's like truly, and the, the, that's the most authentic place I felt. Like whenever I do stand up, I feel like that's exactly what I should be doing. So I'm just working my ass off to do more of that. You know. I think you've touched a lot of lives on YouTube that I hope you're not discounting. No, because I've heard a lot of it. Hundred percent about my time. Dude, and also on YouTube, what you. it's comedy in general. I'm not talking about stand up only. Comedy in general, bro. Making people laugh, making people with the fucking street interviews we did. Every single video I've done, whether it was like a photo shoot video that was more sexual in nature, there was always a comedic undertone because that's what's always been authentically what I want to share with the world. Mm. No matter what it was, even when I did fitness videos, there was always a comedic undertone, and that was that was that was everything I always wanted to do. Yeah. No matter what, the silliness and the comedy was always what I loved. So now I just like have found 
a more like through modeling it's been kind of but now it's like the most direct to consumer fucking version of that which is stand up comedy. Yeah. So that's basically what I'm what I'm doing right now. And also working with Zhao Ying who is a fucking alpha machine. Like guys, you think I'm productive? I feel around Zhao Ying, I feel like a little weasel boy. It's crazy. It's cool. I mean, yeah, yeah. she's I. Right. You just you just saying he'd rather be around alpha Zhao Ying than no, 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 it's no, no. I get it. When you're on your deathbed, you're going to be like, I wish I hustled a little more in New York. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? As I die, <laughs> wish I ran a little more in New York. While we're there, we were here with open arms. <laughs> we were here with open arms. But you were with an alpha. <laughs> an alpha, oh, God. An alpha woman. An alpha woman. I wish I hustled a little more. Oof. Oh, man. Oof. You know what? I messaged him. I, mess- <laughs> I messaged Mario the other day. I went through all these analytics on his YouTube channel uh, and I went through his podcast and I, and I sent him this, all these analytics where I was like, look, even though these videos didn't perform well from a metric standpoint, from views here, are, here's proof. They've got average watch time is up. The comments are high. People care about these things and you're making an impact on people's lives. And I was like, I'm proud of you. A little heart emoji. And then he just left me on red. He, he read what? it and he's like He crap. messaged me like a day later and he's like, Hey, when are you gonna get these videos done? <laughs> he read it, he's like, No, I gotta hustle. So maybe you need to you know, oh, wait, maybe wait, you need wait. to slow down every now and then. <laughs> I totally Think about remember what really it matters anymore. to you. No. Oh. Maybe yeah, maybe you got lost. It was like it was like, maybe, oh, you got, <laughs> maybe you got lost. He's like, oh, oh, it's plausible. I don't, don't remember this. No, I said you oh. I was like fucking Riley reminding me that my views are down. Fucking. <laughs> I mean, the metrics weren't great, but I sent you something. I was right here. I was like, hey. He was like, look at these. I was like, kind of cool to know that all the podcasts that didn't perform well from views you, perspective performed well from here. Paragraphs. <laughs> and he goes, didn't do it. In the time I've known Riley in three years, <laughs> he sent me like three paragraphs. Bro, I, I never. <laughs> I never saw that. Really? No, I I swear to God, I never saw that. Oh, well, that's fan- thank you, bro. I appreciate <laughs> that. Yeah, I appreciate you're that. You're welcome. Uh, Maybe he's just hustled a little too fast. Yeah, dude, it's like it's healthy roses. hustle though because it really comes from a place of inspiration in New York. It's like I don't know. I I always knew that I was gonna live in New York again from the because that's the first place I came here and it's always been my favorite city in the world. And I say I've always known this mm. and I always knew I was gonna go back there at some point. I'm not moving back to New York. I'm just moving away from you. <laughs> I'm not moving to New York. Away I'm just moving from away from Jen. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I'm going to keep both play. I just want to be by coast. That's my goal. Bro. I, I want to be by coastal. Being I'm going to be in New York at the end of each month. But if any <laughs> rich people are out there mm. who want to support well, a hustling well, artist, well. okay? Hit me up. Hit me up. All right? Contact at MauriAdrian.com. I really do need a place because I'm running out of money quick. Okay. I saved up some money. Bitcoin's down. And I don't want to, I'm a hodler. So I'm not touching fucking Bitcoin. Who am I? Am I, am I fucking, I'm a rapist. No, I'm not going to do that. So I am going to try to find either a place, a room I can rent, you know, mm. or a rich sugar daddy who can maybe provide me and have a place for me. I can. Yeah crash when i'm in new york you he know he likes to walk around in his underwear maybe somebody with an art gallery it. or something yeah and if you think that's a bit i'm dead serious <laughs> <laughs> i really am dead serious if anybody has a place and wants to let me crash i'll be forever thankful okay and i'll um i'll do whatever i can do in my power to rectify the <laughs> Rec- to, <laughs> rec- rec- to uh fucking mario adrian to be of service someone's yeah. gonna host him yeah, dude, because like you know, Joe Ying has friends there she can stay with, but like it's it's my money is like because I'm doing less like OnlyFans and modeling, so my money is dropping dramatically, and it's kind of concerning to the point where I have considered selling a whole pick. What are you doing later? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just saying. Um, We're going to the Sean no, Cody event. Yeah, have- <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we story. are. We are. Don't no, you I'm have saying. hundreds of thousands of Delta or United miles? <laughs> Yeah, United. I have I have a membership with United, but I don't have any hotel thing. So I have miles for like hotels. You can fly for free. I'm so dumb, bro. I, I got a credit card that's just like it's a it's a it's a Chase Business Unlimited card, which is like it doesn't transfer to the to the. It's mm. not like a Sapphire. I get the whole fucking Chase system, but it's not like a you can't transfer the points to airline partners. It doesn't translate for it to miles or something. And I can just 
basically redeem them for cash back one to one, which is not nearly as profitable as, as it would have been having like a hotel card or something. Yeah. But you know what? You live, you, you learn, learn. It's all good, and I'll be fine. But you know what's funny? Even the views go, being down on YouTube, which is definitely the case, because I'm posting less like sexual content, but it's much more authentic. I'm fine with it. Like I'm, re I really am. Because yeah. it feels much more authentic when I post a video that I'm like proud of, mm. and the story. It's really authentic. It's more about the people who do watch the content. Yeah. Because that's the quality of the people. If somebody watched my videos just because we're hot, that's cool. But if somebody watches it because they care about <laughs> Jeff's face, <laughs> you know? Yeah. I think I just, going back to our conversations that we were having, I just think it's funny because you were also talking about New York versus LA people and the vibe and yeah. the energy and the speed. Mine and your conversations are like <laughs> eight paragraphs. It's all like we're working in purpose and videos and efficiency and deadlines jeff and i our conversations are like on wednesday he sent me a voice message being like hey like what are you up to this weekend you want to get nasty and then i replied like friday night <laughs> yeah i'm like for sure let's get nasty like i think i maybe have plans on sunday but let's go like tonight tomorrow whatever and then he messaged me back monday morning and he's like, <laughs> and he's like, hey, I'll listen to this later. <laughs> yeah. I was with my girl, I thought he was gonna be like, oh my god, hey, you trying to get a happy ending or something? <laughs> so just like yeah. every two days, and then it will, it's always like, hey, we want to do something this weekend, yeah, and then we'll message each other on Monday and be like, hey, what up? What up? <laughs> <laughs> I think maybe we're on that LA, that LA yeah. speed. Yeah. Maybe we need to. It's true. In New York, it's, <laughs> need to go to New New York. a little more reliable with that. I feel like <gasps> is Mario wearing football pants right now? This is kind of reminds They me. do look like football pants. Right? No, these are um I got No, these, I like them. I got these. These are women's pants and I got them at a um don't gender judge me. 2023. Uh no, I got them at a I got them at a at, at a Goodwill. I was shopping with my girlfriend and and Jia Ying and Jia Ying bought me these. I like them. <coughs> I still think you look like a little Korean pear. A little apple oh, like pear. A pear with that one, yeah, yeah. That was, that's pretty that's pretty fashionable. Yeah. I kind of miss some of your personal videos on YouTube because this is what I'll say about comedy. I love comedy. Tim Dillon's my fucking favorite. There's almost something, this isn't you, but there's almost something slightly inauthentic to comedy to me when you are trying to know the person. Because when you're trying to, when, uh, sure. to be funny, you're, you're almost doing a bit. Yeah. Always. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? So as as a fan of yours, yeah. and I know you, you're you missing your purpose and whatever, but... <laughs> Um, yeah, I wouldn't mind seeing you do some more personal videos because I, some of the people that come up and, you know, always ask about you, I think they've been following you for a while. Yeah. Maybe it's the street. I'm sure a lot of it's No, 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 it's not. Interviews. That's what I realized also about YouTube. And I, I'm actually shifting a little bit because what I realized about the street interviews, I love that. and I love that improv comp because it's basically like doing stand up. It's like doing crowd work and stand up because I'm interacting with people and it's like about being witty on the spot. And I love communicating with people and connecting with them. That's my favorite, favorite thing ever. But I do talk to people who come to my stand-up shows and the people who come to my shows first observation very interesting mainly women which is so interesting <laughs> born no, i'm assuming yeah okay. yeah yeah mostly so even though my view like i would say on the podcast i think it's 75 percent men <laughs> on the youtube channel it's probably like 85 percent men right and i would say like mainly gay men watching right so um it's a cuckoo clock we installed. <laughs> I was yeah. like, what the fuck was that? <laughs> so, um, but the people who come out to my shows are mainly women. I just feel like with women, there is another level of loyalty somehow that connect more with stand-up comedy. And also, here's the thing. Gay men, stereotypically, do not watch stand-up comedy as much as women and straight mm -hmm. men. Because gay men watch more Broadway theater, right? They watch musicals. Again, stereotypically. Uh, br drag brunch that's more like a, you know drag shows are kind of comedic as well in nature but the stand up comedy women love stand up and you see it with people like Matt Reif yeah. right who's kind of like what I realized is like naturally what I would fall into more yeah. and I realize when I do shows with not my fans but people in the audience in New York where I do Zhao Ying shows where a lot of her fans come out who comes up to me after the show it's a lot of women and I'm like you know what I've been neglecting women a lot he finally realizes it. I like mm -hmm. women. I thought I didn't, but I do. And I'm sorry to all the women. It's one of the first things we talked about. I've been stuck the collecting of women. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. True. We so talk, if there's any women watching rights, right Mario's now, like, please leave what? a comment because we love you. We love you. 
And um, I would see more of, I would love to see more of you guys, uh, you know, my stand up comedy shows. What about Jeff Kasser? What mm. happened to your YouTube channel? It's gone. Mm. It's not gone, but I mean. Yeah, I don't know. With content creation, I'm kind of at that point where I don't know what the purpose is necessarily. I mean, it's to make money as part of it. And I don't know if that's something that will drive me long term. Yeah. Um. And yeah, I guess, I don't know, just content creation. It's one of those things, too, where the more I look at it, the more I don't like it. You really? know? Yeah. I'm just at that point where I don't really know. I'm taking time. I want to live life. Um, think about what I can provide to the world, give to the world. Uh, maybe find a passion in there. <laughs> I get that. Uh, I definitely do want to keep doing content creation, but I don't know. I'm taking a little break right now. I feel yeah. that. Because, again, I don't know, like... Now, when I get up to do my post, because I'm not as organized as you guys, I hate it, bro. Mm -hmm. Fucking hate it. I almost need the Adderall. I don't take it, but I almost need it just to do it. No, I 1,000% feel that. I, yeah. I'm taking my first social media break that I've taken since I started social media. I haven't opened social media in like two months. For real? Since Coachella. Since Coachella, I have Shut not up. opened my social media. Part of that's because I've been depressed. <laughs> but like... Okay. <laughs> but, and, and a lot of it was also because just social media. I was like, I don't know how much social media is adding to this. Because mm. there's definitely things. I mean, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And one thing I have noticed is that while there are symptoms that manifest themselves through my social media consumption and whatever else, like the tendency to compare myself to others, whatever. Yeah. Or how you've mentioned, right, that I'm very like addicted to my phone or whatever. Yeah. These are things that even when I remove social media they, the base, the roots are still very much present mm. and they just manifest themselves in a different way. Got it. I haven't been on social media in two months, uh -huh. but I've finished 12 books in the past 41 days that are all 500 pages. I've been reading 240 pages a day on average. Okay. What are you reading? Everything. Fiction, the Bible. Fiction, like, okay, yeah. just kind of all over the place. And, and, but it's become... <laughs> What are, you, what are you reading? All of it. <laughs> All of it. Like All of it. Yeah, I'll read like, I've got some books on ADHD. I have some books on communication. I have novels that I've been reading that are like, whatever, just kind of like fantasy stuff. And Do you feel like a different energetically between, because like there's a difference between energetically spending that time scrolling TikTok, seeing e-boys doing some dance mm. versus reading a book about communication, ADHD. Like, do you feel different? Because that's such a drastic change. It is, but... I've noticed in both cases that it's usually some still form of like escapism. Got it. And, and so that's what I'm saying with like taking the break off of social media has helped me realize, okay, there are more underlying root causes here than yeah. just, oh, I'm not addicted to social media yeah. per se. Mm -hmm. That's not the root. That's just a symptom of, oh, okay, I'm a little unhappy with where my situation is in life. And so I'm using things to... Yeah, compare very, myself to others and escape that way or read a fantasy novel and escape that way or play video games common, and escape yeah. that way, whatever it is. You want to escape always. Yeah. And so, yeah, I think like taking breaks from social media, from content creation, from these things, especially when you're feeling that pressure to create and it's hard to do, um, it definitely like allows you to at least take a step back and, you know, just I would say just like pay attention to those feelings that you're having and see if they're coming through in other areas of your life now. If you take the break off from content creation, be like, okay, am I still, are you filling it with something else or are you, you know what I mean? Or is like, are you using your relationship as like a crutch? Are you going to like use codependency, stuff like that? There's just a lot of ways that these things can like insidiously manifest themselves. Yeah. Well, it sounds more like what is the problem is like, it's tough for you to be by yourself with no stimulation, right? Yeah. Whether it's a book or something else, right? So. I think the biggest challenge would be like, that's what the whole, Vipa have you heard of Vipassana? It's a silent retreat, heard essentially. Of it. Okay, yeah, like yeah. I talk a lot of people who go like, they go to San Francisco and there's like literally a week or like 10 days. It's different, <clears throat> different versions of it, right? Interesting. You do a week of no input, meaning you're there, you meditate, wow. but you don't talk to people. You don't write anything. You don't read a book. <laughs> so you are with yourself. And that is... The most horrifying thing you could ever do. <laughs> it is. It really is. Because I did that when I was in China. Yeah. You know, when I was with the monks, they didn't, there was one monk that sort of kind of spoke English, but I spent five weeks in a monastery. Yeah. Speaking essentially no English. Yeah. With anybody. 
and even the there were a few people who other tourists or whatever who showed up that spoke English and I just pretended that I didn't speak English mm. just so that I could because that was why I went there was almost that sort of a thing I was like I want to go there and just think and just be with myself and like figure that out and at the time that was really cool and now for some reason I'm scared of it again yeah and uh yeah there's definitely like something that scared I'm of doing dig that into. retreat again? scared of the idea of having no input mm. except for what is being put in from my own head do you ever have you ever like meditate how's that um, I have, but more in the sense of where you're trying to accept the thoughts and push them away sort of a thing where like quiet me- meditation versus mm. more like sitting and thinking and reflecting kind of meditation. There's, I don't know, there's so there's, many different types. So, and kinds. It's, it's so deep, but I've done a lot of this meditation stuff. You know, I've, I've been very involved in the, um, because <laughs> when I first came here, I was, I went to Burning Man. So mm-hmm. a lot of the friends, I was more around a more spiritual group of friends, I would say, you know, as opposed to now I'm around, you know, a lot of very uh, shallow male models, porn stars, mm-hmm. um, you know, and dogs from Mexico. He was, he was so, dreaming. He was yeah, he, he's dreaming. Yeah, yeah. So. <laughs> um, but they were also saying that, like, if you meditate, there's they, there's some meditation um, philosophies where they say even visualizing something is taken away from the nothingness of, like, mm. the purpose of meditation. So they say even if you – because some meditation is, like, you focus on your breath. And they're like, no, that's not good because – that's still connected to you. You got to lose all of that. So yeah, what I recommend, what Jeff recommends, just like a 10 gram dose of mushrooms. <laughs> okay. You lock yourself in a dark closet. All right. And you, you see what happens. Right? I, think, I honestly do think that would, maybe, maybe I'll try to do that before I leave. Yeah. Just put myself in a 10 grams, but <laughs> a couple of grams would probably be good. Yeah, yeah. Look at this dog. Um, he's like, he's, yeah, like he's, he's twitching. Yeah. What a cutie. He's like sleeping and dreaming about something. Yo, I had the most disturbing dream yesterday. Holy fuck. I've had, I've been having like crazy dreams. Dude. Yeah. So I saw the new Burt Kreischer movie yesterday. Have you seen that? The Burt Kreischer, you know, the comedian, the machine. Yeah. He has a movie. <laughs> Have you heard the machine story? It's no, the most no. viral YouTube clip of a stand up story ever. It's got like 60 really? million views. It's crazy. Yeah. So it's a story of him, how he got involved with the rush. Holy fuck. <laughs> he got involved with the Russian mafia. He's awake now. Hi, Dex. Uh, he, he got involved with the Russian mafia. And there's a scene where he, a dog is thrown out of a window. And for some reason, the whole movie theater, because we're in LA, right? People love dogs here. The whole movie theater was like, you no. know, there's people being shot. There's yeah. guys being fucking stabbed. The head's twisted. And there's one scene where like the guy's head's chopped off and it's landing on bird. Everybody's like laughing. But when the dog was thrown out of the fourth floor of a building, everybody was like, that's too much. We're leaving. <laughs> this isn't too much. No, um, but then I had a dream of like, I don't want to even want to say it, but I, I basically accidentally <laughs> ripped off Dex's <laughs> legs and I felt so guilty. And in my dream, have you ever had this? It was so fucked up. Like I was, I was trying to help him because he had a surgery recently. So I like, I tried to help him with something and then I was like, oh my God, let me help you with the paw thing. And what I, and next thing I know, his paw was in my hand. Oh my and I was God. like, and I was like, what have I done? I'm and a then, monster. And then Dex was like, you know, limping. And I was so, I felt so guilty. And then I, in my dream, I was like, no, this can't be happening. This is a dream. And then I was like, fuck, it's not a dream. This is real life. This is real mm. life. This is real life. And I was in my, in my dream, I was hoping that it was going to be a dream, but I convinced myself in my dream that this was not a dream. And then I cried. <laughs> And then when I woke up in the morning, I looked at Dex and I was like, what's up, bro? Thank you. Good, good. Well, the paw's still there. Yeah. That's actually very common. Uh, it's very it. common ripping your dog. Like, no, no, dogs no, 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 no. I was like, where'd no, you go with it, that? It's very common to think to yourself while you're dreaming that you're dreaming, mm, mm. but your brain is very, very good at, at recognizing that and it'll, it'll flip it and it'll, something else will happen or whatever. It'll, it'll suck you back into the dream. Yeah, convincing you that Start you're not back dreaming. The dream, bro. Yeah, you tried. You tried. <laughs> That's why you have to have a um, a dream check, a reality check, like an Inception. Okay. Oh yeah, yeah. Mine, mine. If you ever see me, sometimes I'll do it because I'll get, I'll just want to lose a dream or whatever, and so I'll get back into it for a bit. And so if you ever see me go like this, it's usually because I'm checking to see if I can breathe through my nose, even if I like have plugged it, right? Because if you plug your nose, you obviously can't breathe through it. But if you're dreaming, you can. You'll just mm. breathe normally. How do some, you remember that shit when you're in a dream? Or some people do it like this. So what you do is you um you anchor it to it's like um atomic habits, right? Where you anchor your habits to each other to yeah. it's like that. So you would anchor a reality check to any time you feel an emotion of surprise 
or anytime you feel like, oh, that's weird. You know, you see something like, oh, Dex is twitching. Oh, like, that's kind of funny. And then you do it. And that way, then oh. when you're dreaming and you have something happen where you go, oh, that's a little odd, then you're, you chain your little reality check to that's it. That's some Inception Matrix shit right yeah. there. Crazy. Yeah. And so that's why anytime anybody ever, even now when I haven't really like focused on lucid dreaming forever, anytime somebody talks to me about like this, or yeah. they're dreaming or they say something like, oh, what if we were dreaming? I always go, because <laughs> I'm like, I've seen you do that before. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, I'm like, what if, what if we are dreaming? <laughs> like, I thought you did coke real. or something. You, you think, are no. getting a happy ending. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a surprise. Damn, that's crazy. Yeah. That's it. Really shows that you've been reading books and stuff, you know? Because you were like, uh, <laughs> you're like you know, like an atomic habit, you know, when you anchor it. Like, <laughs> yeah. like, this guy's been reading. <laughs> this guy's been reading. Well, do you, so you think when you go to the Philippines again, you're gonna resume your uh, social media consumption, or like, what do you, what, what's your goal with that? <laughs> my original intent was to take a one month off. Mm -hmm. That's passed, and now my hope has been to try to get back onto social media, do a post or something before Friday was my hope. But I don't have anything queued up, and I don't know if I'm ready for that yet. Yeah. So, um. But obviously with modeling and how you were even saying when I was there and, and there was all this stuff happening and I was posting it on my stories and clubs and hanging out with models and TikToks and all these things. Yeah. It's just going to naturally, yeah. like you can't be modeling yeah, and not be I posting on social media. <laughs> no, you can't really force creativity. And that's the thing, what I feel right now with New York, it's like right now I'm in such a inspired place. Mm. So I almost want to ride the wave. Like when I feel, sometimes I would judge myself because I work a lot, right? And I would judge myself. I'd go home and I'd be like, because you know, I grew up, my dad, for example, he's a very modest guy and he always tells me, Mario, why do you go so fast? Why don't you just are content with less? Mm. Which is great. And he has that mindset more. And I really respect him for that. Um, for example, he, he, he's, a, he's a chimney sweeper mm. in Germany, right? And he, he had the offer. He could have had his own chimney sweeping. He could have been basically a, he's an employee now of like a, whatever district he could have been his own boss but he was like you know what mario if i become my own boss i live such a great life right now you know i can do whatever i want i have the car i want to drive i can he's going to mm -hmm. come visit actually in the u.s this year so we're going to see him um i can do whatever i want i can take my go with my cousins when you come here we can go to restaurants i can have a vacation you know i can go to croatia in the summer why would i want to mm -hmm. take on the stress and the responsibility of having this more prestigious job that makes a little bit more money, but then I'm responsible and I have to issue the paperwork and all that. He's like, no, I'm content here. And I really respect that. Yeah. But it has to be authentically where you come from. And sometimes I would take that and I would judge myself when I feel more ambitious, when I'm like, okay, I come back now and I'm still working and it's like 10 p.m. and I want to work more. Then I feel like, oh, is this unhealthy? And I would judge myself a lot. That's the biggest thing I would judge myself a lot. Yeah. And acceptance is the biggest fucking thing accepting everything about you and accepting the fact that I am in a creative phase right now where I want to work and also accepting that and allowing that and then also accepting when you're not being creative and not yeah. judging that yeah because that was the biggest embracing the creativity when it comes to yeah. yeah like you were saying with you can't force creativity that was the biggest I think uh catalyst for sort of all this was when we were at Coachella I felt so creative being around you and Jeff and <clears throat> Emma and everybody like, but actually like living in that space and being in that space and creating together. Cause obviously we create together yeah. um, when we're doing stuff like this. Yeah. Um, but it's, you know, it's more segmented. Yeah. It, there's a, a week, two weeks in between. Sure. We're not like living together in the same space. hundred percent. Yep. Necessarily. Um, and so I think that was sort of the biggest catalyst was cause I, I felt so inspired. I stayed up until 4 a.m. that one, one day shooting. One day. Yeah. 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 And, yeah I remember uh, that. Yeah. And then I came back and I was so excited to ride that creative wave like you're saying and yeah and i just couldn't mm. there was no wave yeah i was yeah. just floating down a There's sea of no, nothing no i was like in waves you're just in the ocean in, in a world. lake you're trying to surf <laughs> yeah, in the like, fucking where lake did, where did yeah. it go yeah um, well a lot of so people think, get a little down after festivals you know yeah I but think also yeah I, I feel like that because like once you have such an it's almost like taking drugs right even if whether you take drugs or not at a festival you have such a I feel that in, when i went traveling in bali indonesia i did this tv show and i was high on fucking life and then after everything was over and I was just in, my, in, in the villa in Bali and I was like, oh shit. It's almost like a come down from mm -hmm. natural highs, yeah. you know, experiences, you know. So, yeah. But, you know, something, something. There's no light without the shadow, blah, blah. <laughs> you know, it's true. It's true. we have to have a comparison. Life is peaks and valleys and sometimes valleys are where the progress is made. <laughs> All these things, but all these things <laughs> from all the ten books you read in the last week. Yeah. Holy <laughs> shit! I don't know. I feel yeah. 
despite the struggles of of the present, I still feel good about where my headspace is. Okay, because at least at least I'm in a spot where I know where it's all mostly coming from, and and I can see. You know, yeah, where these I'm feeling these things. Yeah, you seem very reflected. You know, a lot of people don't. You know, yeah. So I think that's that that's great. And and the the man, I can only say. And now reflecting on this after going to New York, the environment and also the people you surround yourself with, it's everything. Mm -hmm. It is everything. Being around comedians nonstop, whether you want it or not, it will affect you, and it will. It's such a threat. Yeah. <laughs> Whether you want it or not, <laughs> it will affect no, you. Like, okay, I'm, an, I'm an example, right? When we hung around all the porn stars in Isla Mujeres, you get inspired by that. You do. And Honestly, true, yeah. It is so true, right? Yeah. Like when I was hanging around like, uh, and you know, I love Reno, uh, but like being around Reno, being around in Isla Mujeres, especially with all the porn stars, you know, they're all doing OnlyFans. And then you get inspired to like do more OnlyFans. Now, after spending this time with all these very established comedians who are touring and making money with stand-up, I was like, oh, that's inspiring. And that now I'm like really set on stand-up. When you're modeling or doing fitness, I was around a lot of fitness people because I was hanging out with this guy, Misha Janjic mm -hmm. in, in, in Germany and stuff. He's a big fitness guy. And when I was hanging around with those people. I was like, oh yeah, I want to like, you know, get back in the gym and good. It's Everything who you spend time with is everything. So it's really good to have, be you know, when you're in the Philippines, being around other people that are whatever creators, models, and have the same mindset. Yeah, it's everything. And you know, I don't know if you just at your place maybe with your partner, and there's not a lot of other stuff to inspire you. I feel the same way here. That's why I'm always afraid of LA because in LA I'm not as I almost feel a little down here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I mean, even my partner Ricky and I have have talked about another reason that we kind of want to have our own separate spaces because it's so easy to fall into a routine of just existing with your partner, which yeah. is fine. And it, but it kind of goes back to like with your dad versus you, like the yeah. mentality of being satisfied with less or being or shooting for more. And sometimes you get into these routines with your partner where you just exist, you watch yeah. shows yeah, yeah, in yeah. bed together or yeah. whatever it is. So we were talking about that. And that's another reason why we're like, if we get separate places, it'll be more intentional when we hang out. Mm -hmm. We're going to, there's more intention behind let's have a date night. Let's go out and go somewhere and do things together. Yeah. And, but then when we're just at our, by ourselves at home, we can be more productive and focused rather yeah. than being a little bit distracted by this. I kind of have a morning routine with her. That's very, yeah. you know, if I start working before she gets up, then when she wakes up, we talk. And so then that kind of takes me out of the flow. And, um, yeah. So yeah, there's definitely like a, a the truth to that. So, bottom line is, living with a girlfriend makes you less productive, Jeff. Absolutely. So, you know what my full circle with you know what my wrestling coach used to tell me all the time when I was twelve. He was telling me, "Girls make you weak." Wow. That's what he would say. That's what my wrestling coach would say. If I ever, if he found Damn. out that any of us had a girlfriend, he'd be like, and he would make us run extra. He'd be like, "Girls make you weak," so I have to like, you have to go harder than everybody else who doesn't have a girlfriend. Oh my god. <laughs> I think so maybe I'm traumatized. I don't know. Something to that is some degree. <laughs> but what I'll say is, not having a girlfriend makes you. I think chasing girls mm. is even more distracting than having a girlfriend. Because yeah. if I think about the amount of time and energy I would have to put in to pursue girls, would be nothing because girls come to me, right? <laughs> so this apply to me, but, 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 but other people. <laughs> <laughs> but other people, you know, having a relationship. It's chill. You don't have to pursue. You don't spend the energy in that. You have this familiarity and almost supports my... I was always afraid that a relationship was going to make my career suffer. Mm. But now I feel like it gives me more stability in that aspect of my life so I can really focus on my career. Yeah. And we're so stable. Like I'm basically gone all the time now, you know, with Vita. I'm basically always in New York. But think about it this way. Yeah. The increase that you're paying in your rent... From your last place to this place, yeah, is exactly what you just had quoted earlier for a place in New York would have been. Hey, hey, hey! So, God fucking <laughs> right. Do you think you could have started? Vita, have I'm not saying we gotta. <laughs> I'm not saying to start a fight about it, but if you do, record it and send it to me. Cool. Like I crunched the numbers. <laughs> no, actually, you're exactly right. It is the math checks it's out. Exactly, I, I could have instead of having this place here with Vita. I could have a place here and in New York potentially. 
But I'm still hoping the rich New York <laughs> person who's going to let me stay at their place is going to come through. Um, he likes to walk around in his underwear. I, I, yeah. He, I, he showers um, and then he I, comes out in his towel. He, yeah. <laughs> I've seen it. I've seen it. These are all things. These are all things. If I you do. if you These want this around, all you. things I do. I, I carrots. I'm you know. He's I'm, inspiring. He he was a personal trainer, sort of. I make um, eggs. You make. He does actually. This he is makes eggs. This is very true. He makes very good eggs. Yeah, and I'm with love, like with, with fruit love. and everything, like a nice. And I make green tea. You know, I'm good. I'm a good. I'm a good housewife. I'm whatever you need me to be. But I'm a good not, side not chick. For Jeff. Yeah. Not a housewife for Jeff, but for anybody else. He's I mean, awesome. Jeff, if you got me, if you get me a place in New York, I'll I'll be your housewife. I don't fucking care, dude. They take Bitcoin. They take Safe Moon. <laughs> they take Safe Moon. Yeah, <laughs> Jeff. Do you think like? Because I was thinking, because I make I'm, I'm, I kind of have to make some more, get some more money. I was thinking about what do you think about that? If I take some of my Bitcoin, listen before we freak out. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> I have Ethereum a lot, and I have Bitcoin, right? About fifty fifty. So I was thinking about maybe clearing out the Ethereum, so that I'm basically zero on that. Because I don't pay taxes unless I make profit, right? Right. So I could just take it out and then just have Bitcoin. Because I fucking Litecoin, Dogecoin. I want to clear all that shit, just have Bitcoin. And then I have some extra cash to sustain this lifestyle until until I make it, uh, you know, make um, do my own headlining tour as a comedian. Yeah, you should. I mean, I think the Bitcoin halving is next year. So we're looking good. Once is there going to be an Ethereum halving? No, but I asked you before. I said, <laughs> why, do you, why do you invest in Ethereum? Dude, because I fucking don't know anything about crypto and I just did 50-50 because Ethereum sounds cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Bro, uh, he's if, right. He's Ethereum, right. dude. <laughs> fucking, that's a great name. I mean, Ethereum. It's like, yeah. Right? It's like the ether. It's fucking like, it's eternal. It's almost like eternal and ether together. It's like Ethereum. Fucking. Yeah. It's Ethereum. Like so what's been going on? Your OnlyFans been dropping? Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Not showing enough crack on there? That's right. No crack. I mean, I'm showing whatever. Like, I post like photos, like you know, like nudes and from photo shoots and stuff, but not nothing like. I, I'm just. It's not. It used to be authentic at one point in my point in my life, but it's not really anymore. And I really want to stay true to myself because I used to do modeling and I really love the creative expression of creating very sexy imagery. Mm -hmm. But now it's just like comedy is like really what is like the thing right now. Yeah. So it doesn't feel authentic leaning too much on that. So yeah, I'm making less money, but there's still, I love everybody. Thanks to everybody in OnlyFans who's like supporting and there's a lot of people who, you know, there's a more personal connection. I'm, I'm chatting with a lot of people. There's just that like feel where <clears throat> instead of, yeah, it, it feels like, it feels like a tighter and the people who are there are the people who really care. So that, that's yeah. nice. And there's less people and it's less money, but it's cool. I'm not, I'm not too worried about it. It's just, I'm investing in myself right now, you know? So um, I'm growing so much with stand up, and my goal is to, um, Learn more, get better at stand up right every single day, and then next year, this year I'm gonna I'm gonna headline my first, my own shows in New York. I'm gonna do shows stand up New York probably. And again, if you go to maraide.com slash comedy, you can sign up for the email list. You can join, and I would love to see you in person there. And <laughs> next year, I want to start headlining some clubs. I want to travel, do like a show in Seattle, show in Chicago. That's the plan for next year. And also next year, I want to film a, a YouTube special, and a, a stand up special for YouTube. I want to see Mara Adrian at the YouTube Theater one day. Yeah, let's do it. Uh, I think the YouTube special can be called maybe gay or European. Mm -hmm. I think that's that could be fun because mm -hmm. I have a lot of like, um, <laughs> I have this gay bit with gay Harry Styles that's really evolved right now. So I don't know. Um, yeah, that's the that's, goal that's, right now. That's the word of the month, evolve, <laughs> evolution. Yeah. I feel like we've used it a lot. Yeah. I have a question for Mario. Yeah. <laughs> Hit me. I want to talk about something that actually matters. Okay. Are you getting engaged soon? <laughs> <laughs> because if I know people I know women and there's always an urgency what women do you know name five women you're friends with <laughs> I know women trust me I know men too he doesn't know a woman he knows women exactly. it's different it's okay. different and I know men very well but I know women very, very well. Yeah. And she thinks about it every single day of her life. Mm. And I just wanted to ask you, are you getting engaged soon? Mario? I kind of asked that question because <clears throat> I think I let the girls pursue me yeah. just because of the status in life I hold. 
Right. Bro. I'm clipping like, this. I'm I, clipping yeah. this with the sunglasses. Bro, I'm going to give like, no context. I feel like. <laughs> <laughs> no, you I feel like Andrew with Tate this. right now. I feel like a, a, a Mario <laughs> version. I have a character in the cigar. <laughs> I'm just like, you know. You're Mario. Women who. Pro- man who proposed to. <laughs> <laughs> I can't do it. I'm too much of a weakling. <sighs> men who propose to women are weak. <laughs> Agreed. You let and men who allow themselves to be proposed to. Or even weaker. <laughs> Real strong. <laughs> also, marriage is gay. So <laughs> let's talk about it. Okay. Um, <laughs> I'm just wondering. I can sense that it's getting closer. Listen, I think I was like, yeah. I I think <sighs> moving in together was a big first step, and I feel very secure in what we have, and I would love to see where it goes in the future. She does not feel secure. <laughs> in what She's a woman. She's a woman, yeah. I think I'm also going to... Guys, comment below if you want to have my girlfriend on the podcast, just me and her, so we can talk those things <laughs> yeah. out. Or maybe Jeff. Jeff, 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 Jeff can be the mediator. Jeff be like, so... <laughs> are you guys getting warrior. engaged? Listen, <laughs> here's the thing. I'm German, right? Do Germans believe in marriage? <laughs> <laughs> I grew up with never believing in marriage, and I never thought that marriage would be something that I have to do. Just because I... My mom never got married. My mom never married my dad. And I've just seen a lot of marriages falling apart. And I just, no, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not religious in any sense. So I didn't see the value in that necessarily. And I think you can have a commitment like moving in together for me is almost as much of a commitment to the relationship as a marriage, if not more, because you're committing to sharing your space with somebody. Yeah. That's more than just some like, you know, a contract you make in, you know, in front of a state or church or whatever it is, right? So in that sense, I never felt the need to. However, I've been to a lot of weddings now in the U.S. I've been to like three, four weddings. And I went to Josh and Rachel's wedding and they had like the most badass wedding ever. So I would want to get married for just for so the, I have... For the reception. <laughs> the most badass wedding yeah. that people are going to talk about mm. and for the clips online. <laughs> so I think... <laughs> I if, for the if I think about all that, like it would be cool for branding, you know what I mean? <laughs> and then I could write stand-up material about <laughs> my wife, which would be relatable, you know, mm-hmm. and would mm-hmm. make me sell out more stadiums. So in that sense, I think, um, yeah, I'm ready. The, the long <laughs> answer is... Yes. I'm sure your PR person would say, hey, getting married to a Jewish woman is the best thing that you could do for your brand. Oh, yeah. yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. Sense. It all tracks. 100%. It I want to works. marry a Jewish woman so I can, you know, it's like reparations. And yeah. you get a green card. <laughs> and I got a green card. Yeah. It's pros Ooh. on pros on pros. Where are the cons? Yeah, the green card thing, I've, I sometimes forget that I'm an immigrant. <laughs> you know? You're like, oh, yeah. I do, I do. Because I feel like, you know, I feel like strong American, you know, I'm like, people always think I'm from Arkansas, you know. Yeah, that's yeah. true. Well, Jeff, are you getting married? What, what's up? Because this seems like, you know, when you know, people are projecting, it's like kind of like, you know, he's like, <laughs> are you getting married? <laughs> yeah, I mean, your, your girl just moved herself in. Jeff, yeah, so what do, you, what do you think about this whole marriage thing? Because I've been noticing that, you know. I think about it like a guy does. I think I'm like, what, what's the purpose of getting married? You want something on paper? You want the legal? Is this financial? You want security? You want a ring? What is it? Yeah. But girls want a wedding, bro. And all that shit he said is kind of irrelevant to a girl. Well, maybe not the... When they talk about getting married, he's just thinking, big wedding, big wedding. <laughs> lots of cameras, yeah. lots of No, cam- but she... I mean, she wants to... She's very romantic, so she would love the wedding and stuff. I'm much more You're pragmatic. You're romantic as well. I'm romantic, but not as much as her. I'm much more pragmatic, you know? Mm-hmm. I'm still efficient. I'm more mm-hmm. efficient than I am romantic. I'm German. I was not raised to be romantic. I was raised to be efficient, okay? I... Yeah. Hey, my girlfriend, she might want to get married, but she still has on her hinge profile that she has a main partner and looking for. Mm, mm. <laughs> but I mean, she doesn't. I don't think she hooks up. With monogamy people, is but... not a requirement for marriage, right? Facts. Okay. Yeah. Poly Facts. marriage. If you got married to somebody who was in a, a much different financial tier than you, would you sign prenups? Different in what way? Like lower. Wealthy, lower? I would sign the, the prenup. Would you like coming would you... into the, yeah. Yeah. To protect what I have going into the marriage. Yeah. Can we clarify that real quick? So, like, when you get married, you you share your income from that point on, no matter what, right? Pre- but, yeah, basically. And the prenup means that whatever Bitcoin he has now, he keeps. It's his. And if they get divorced, then it's still his. And it's unto- she can't touch it. Right. Yeah, Interesting. Right? And a prenup doesn't really protect anything you make after getting married, right? Right. It's just like it's your... 
assets that you have made up to this point uh -huh. and like the derivatives of those assets. So if you had a business yeah. or whatever, I think that's kind of protected by the prenup. So it's like if your business continues to generate, I believe that is protected. I'm not 100% sure on that. Um, but if you were to start a business uh -huh. now in the wedding, then that's different. Interesting. Okay. So, so yeah, it's question. a me corporation would be safe. I don't know that from the, it, the so. greedy fingers of a Jewish woman. <laughs> See, that's the thing because like usually if you bring up a prenup in a lot of cases, then your marriage partner is like, why do you want to sign that? You think we're going to break up? You think I'm going to try to take money from you kind of a thing? I think, but, no, I think if you have a secure relationship, I think that's, you know, you should be able to talk about like those. You like Spider-Man right now. You look like, <laughs> Mi like Miles Morales. I like that. I don't know what it is. Um, what? If Miles you, Morales? He's, he's the, he's the, <laughs> He's the black Spider-Man. Oh, yeah yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I've seen that, yeah. yeah that's I who like you look like. Yeah. Are you getting married? Would you do an exclusive marriage? Like like a monogamous marriage? No. Well, you can't uh, marry more than two people in the US, more than one person in the US, right? I right. <laughs> yeah, but like, you mean just like married to somebody that I'm also then in a monogamous relationship exactly. with? Yeah, no, I would not. I would not. I mean, Whoa! not at this point in time. Not at this point in time. Not at this point in time. And currently, I don't see marriage uh, as being something on the table for me. I think we've had this conversation on the podcast before where I've said, generally speaking, the, all the things you're supposed to want more as you get older in life, I've been wanting less. Mm, mm. I'm like, the idea of getting married, the idea of having a kid, the idea of like all these kind of things. I'm just like, ah, yeah. it's just not. The more that I exist into myself, the more I'm realizing like those things just aren't really me. And I think there's so much in life, so much in life that is societally based on like what, the things that you want right now in life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's like, do you actually at your core as a person and your soul want that? Or is it just because society like good like point? Yeah. Somebody who's like, oh yeah, I love being an accountant. Like I love it. It's my thing. It's like, yeah. Do you? Huh. If you if if you were born somewhere else, like, is that really or is it just like it was just kind of pushed into you like, oh, it makes sense to be an accountant because I make a bunch of money. Well, what whatever. If, okay, would you say the the validation that comes with it? Like, for example, if you're a doctor. Mm. And you, what do you like about being a doctor is the validation, the status it gives you. Mm. It, would you count that in that? Is that really what you want to do? Or would you say that you have to love being a doctor and account because you love the craft of it? I mean, I think it would be just be a, a point of self-reflection. You have to identify that that's what you like about that. Yeah. Right? It's like, oh, okay, this isn't necessarily what I want. It's this symptom of yeah. whatever it is. And so, I don't know. I just think about that a lot on things that I enjoy doing where I'm like, okay, I like creating art. Yeah. Do I like creating photos because I like the amount of likes that I get on Instagram and the mm. comments that I get? Or do you like, or do I like creating, creating yeah. the art? And this is just the yeah. medium that it takes in today's society. If I was born in the 1300s, would I want to learn how to oil paint? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> And I think I would. I do. That's a, that's a good question you got to ask yourself. But I think still 10 grams of mushrooms, dark room. I think that's I think right I, now what, what you should be say, doing. You're on your deathbed and you don't <laughs> think you would, not that you should live your life just based on your deathbed, but mm. you think you're thinking, I wish I would have made more money. I don't think anybody would think that. I think you would probably want to spend time with people you love. Yeah, but I would hustle more. Money's such a tough one. <laughs> money's such a tough one because money like ties in. Word out. I, 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 hustle. I wish I'd gone just like 10% harder, bro. You know? <laughs> <laughs> like that one time I was in Mexico vacation with my mom, bro. I, <laughs> no, I could have cranked a couple more reels, bro, but I didn't. I fucking gave in and like a sissy spent time with You're my like, mother when I could have been working more. I wish I hadn't Fuck. watched Guardians of the Galaxy 3. Oh my God. <laughs> Could have written three more jokes. Yeah. <laughs> I think your perspective will change a little bit over time. Sure it will. Um, because I don't know. I think there's I think you'd be a pretty good father someday, to be honest with you. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> yeah, no, I Did you know that was actually in kindergarten? I sp I specifically remember kindergarten, preschool, preschool. It was before kindergarten. I was five. Okay. My biggest dream, my biggest goal in life, my number one, the only thing I wanted to do was to be the best father ever. That's cool. Four or five years old. I had a dream about it. I still remember the dream. Huh. Like an actual, it was like a nightmare and there was this creepy monster and she was like, whatever, saying all this stuff. And she, and a female monster. She was a female monster. That's cute. That's she, was like, she was like, she was like trying to kill me or whatever. And it was I, a lesbian female. Whoever cast that was probably, yeah. it's probably Netflix who cast that. It's like super woke. And she was trying to kill me and I was like, I can't die here because I'm going to be the number one dad that's ever lived. This is when I was like four or five years old. That's cool. So it's all, it has always been something that's been on my mind. Like I do, and I've always loved kids. I've worked with kids uh, when yeah. I met even. Um, so it's always been a big thing. And, and definitely, even if I never got married or even if I were to be 50 and alone, 
Yeah. <laughs> Single father. We're not as fertile as Jeff. We're not as fertile as Jeff. We can't all be just the fucking giga chat of fer- fertileness here. Fertility. The god of fertility. Um, oh I would probably still adopt if yeah. I was in the right financial situation and everything. Yeah. I would adopt and do the single father life. Well, okay, perfect. But in order to adopt, you have to be the right financial situation. So you got to hustle more. It so all guys, comes back, all comes to, the back to the hustle, bro. <laughs> guys, um, again, join my, join my exclusive list for set up comedy <laughs> dates. <laughs> I'll see you on the road. Um, check out those people. We're going to do one last podcast, one last boys podcast before Riley leaves us. All right. Mm-hmm. Forever to become a dad in the Philippines. So um, drop some comments, ask some questions for us yes, to answer on yes, that yes, one. Yes, exactly, exactly. And um, and I will. I love you. We'll see you in um, in the hyperspace, <laughs> in the metaverse. Exactly. <laughs> we'll see you there. See you there, guys.